Do 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 So you can see this is our setup for our titration experiment. So you can see right here is our stand with the burette clamped right in it. These just squeeze together to allow the burette to move up and down or to be taken completely out. The burette, you can see the liquid level right here, that's filled with hydrochloric acid of an unknown concentration. In our titration, that is what we are going to determine is the concentration of that hydrochloric acid. Down here we have the tap, so that will turn to allow for the liquid to flow out of the burette at varying rates. And behind you can see a few different examples. There's one hidden there, but you can see a couple examples of previous experiments that we're going to compare to when the trial actually takes place. Here's our setup for actually pipetting the sodium carbonate into our Erlenmeyer flask. So we have three things here. This beaker is just containing the sodium carbonate that we're going to use. This pipette is what we're going to measure out the 10 milliliters with. And this bulb goes on the top. And just like when you suction anything up, you're going to put the bulb on the top, squeeze it, and you're going to suction up the liquid. Here you're going to see me demonstrate proper pipetting technique. So I've put the pipette into the beaker. You can see the level of sodium carbonate rising through the pipette. I want to get that right on that line. So you notice I go a bit above and then I take the stopper off and try to let some out with my thumb. I've let out too much so I'm just demonstrating to you that this is not actually as easy as you might think it is. Here I'm having some troubles putting the bulb back on uh, the top, so these are all pretty common things. I think I've got it there now. So you can see the level has gone up above that line. I want to get it eye level here, and I want the bottom of the meniscus to be right on that line right there, and I think I'm happy with that. Here's just a quick still of where that level is. If that was actually held level, then you would be able to see the bottom of the meniscus or that uh, curved shape where the liquid is should be sitting right on that line. Once we've got our proper 10 milliliters, you just let your thumb off the top of the pipette and we're draining it into the flask. This will be for one of our trials. It takes a while. You do not want to put the bulb on the top and force any of the liquid out. You can see it goes out. They are calibrated to retain just a small amount of liquid in the tip of the burette. I'm just adding the indicator here two drops, one, two, swirl it around, and we should get a nice orange color to begin with. Here I'm just demonstrating how this tap works. Uh, if it's horizontal, nothing will come out. The more vertical it is, more will come out. You can play with it just a little bit. Little small movements will change the flow rate of that liquid. So you can see there's just barely a drop coming out there. Here we go with our first trial. You can see when I first start, I'm letting quite a bit of the titrant out. So that's okay. I know that I have a certain volume that I'm probably gonna need. It's probably, my guess from doing this in the past, is about 15 milliliters, maybe a little bit less. So uh, here I'm just kind of going fast to begin with. We'll see why foreshadowing, that's not the best idea to do. You can see I'm putting a little bit in, swirling it around. You'll start to see some color change. So you can see a little bit of pink showing up there as it's dropping in. I know I'm getting close to the end, so I'm going slower now, draw a few drops at a time. It's very easy to turn the tap the wrong way. And it's very easy to have too much come through, kind of like that.
So here we go with trial number two. Again, I haven't learned from my mistakes too much. I'm letting a lot out, but I actually have an idea of how much I need now. The last time I used just under 15 milliliters, so I wanna use even less this time. So I can carry on pretty quick at the start, but as I watch the readings on my burette, I know I'm getting closer to the end point where I have that color change. So at this point, I'm gonna start slowing down a little bit. Rather than going a whole lot at a time, I'm gonna start going drop by drop. And hopefully, we're going to see me get it bang on. You can see I'm trying to use that tap a little bit slower, few drops here rather than a full stream coming out. You can see some color change happening when some of those drops are hitting. We're getting pretty close now. Want to make sure you can see me shaking it all around the whole time, wanting to make sure that it's evenly mixed, that we don't have some places where there's more of the hydrochloric acid than others. We want this to change the entire sample. So we're pretty close here. Hopefully I don't turn the tap the wrong way. You always kind of hold your breath here. I went too quick there. We're getting pretty close. Even watching this now, I'm holding my breath to make sure that I do it properly, even though I know the outcome. We're pretty close. We'll drop a few more drops in, and it's actually gonna be hard to see. We're looking for a peach color, and you don't see a super noticeable change there, but it's bang on. Way to go, me. So there you have it, there's my trial uh, second to the left. It is that nice peachy color. It's not yellow, which would indicate I have not added enough hydrochloric acid. It's not pink, which is when I add too much. It's right there in the middle. And actually, you can see my measurements up on the screen right here. That was my first trial where I didn't do very well and it was 14.8 milliliters. So this trial, I don't have the data right there, but it was less than that because we're right in that right correct range. So for any titrations that you do, you then need to find three consistent trials that are within point two milliliters of each other. And for your calculations, you will take the average of those trials that are in close agreement with each other.